Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and I'm one of the University of Arizona's HPC consultants and today I wanted to go over using Anaconda and Jupyter on HPC. Specifically, I want to cover how to configure Anaconda in your account and how to set up a local custom environment. From there, we'll learn how to install packages into that environment. So specifically for this tutorial, we're going to be installing TensorFlow with GPU capabilities. But this methodology is really applicable to a lot of packages. Next, we're going to learn how to create a custom kernel. So if you've ever worked in a Jupyter session in On Demand and you've wondered, well, I set up this environment in a standard terminal session on HPC, is there a way for my Jupyter notebook to be able to see the packages that I've installed in this other environment? The answer is yes. Um, the way to do that is by creating a custom kernel. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to customize that kernel. So this isn't applicable to every case, but in the case of TensorFlow, in order for it to be able to complete some of its functionality, so um, to see a GPU, it needs access to some additional software modules. Specifically for TensorFlow, we need the CUDA modules. Now, the Jupyter Notebook sessions are configured in a very specific way, and so if you are just working directly in the notebook, you won't be able to module load things very easily. But if we customize the kernel, we're going to be able to load modules as this session is starting, and that will give you access to the things that you need. All right, let's get started. All right, so one of the first things that we need to do to get started is to log into HPC. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and get started doing that. You can always pause this video if you need. Um, and then you're going to want to uh, request an interactive session. So you can do that with the interactive command. If you throw in this dash A followed by your group name, um, you will get the standard partition. Um, and especially if you run this on Ocelote or Elgato, that will speed up the process of getting your interactive session a lot. Um, I know a lot of people get frustrated if you just run interactive straight on Puma um, using the windfall partition. Um, I'm also requesting a GPU, so that's what this dash G flag is, specifically because I'm going to be installing TensorFlow and I want to be able to test to see if it can see the GPUs, but this isn't necessary um, depending on the packages that you want to install. Um, and lastly, I've requested six hours for the session um, just to make sure that we don't time out. So once your session is up and running, you can check what Anaconda modules are available on the system by running the command module avail Anaconda. So you can see as of this recording, which is September um, 2023, we have three Anaconda modules. Now I'm going to load the, lo uh, the most recent one. Um, typically, when there are multiple modules available, the newest is the default, but I always like to load software with the modules, uh, with the module version specifically stated, because whenever we update a module, um, the latest becomes the default, which means that if you're just using module load Anaconda, the version might be switched out from underneath you and cause some unexpected issues. So I'm going to run the command module load Anaconda 2022.04. From there, we're going to run a command called conda init. So this is a way to initialize Anaconda for use in your account. Specifically, we're going to be using the bash shell. So run the command conda init bash. And what this does is it will add some lines to a hidden configuration file in your home directory called bashrc. So if you look here specifically, this, is, this shows you what file has been modified. Now, if you're not familiar with dot files, anything that shows up with a dot is hidden when you do a standard ls, and those are typically important configuration files, so it's best um, to be careful when working with them. Now, for these changes to take effect, um, they tell you to close and reopen your current shell, but you can also run the command source bashrc, so that's just taking the contents of this hidden configuration file and making them live. All right, so now I have a fancy little command that I use um, that's called chelp. Uh, this is just available on my account, but um, it turns on a conda cheat sheet. 
So we're going to look down here at the bottom um, where you see this conda config set auto activate base false. We're going to want to run this command and I'm going to put at the end of this video our documentation that has all these commands um, so that you can copy and paste directly from there. Um, but the reason that we want to run this is because the default behavior for Anaconda is to automatically activate itself every time you log into your account. Now this isn't always good. So for example, if you've ever tried to run an open on-demand desktop session and you've encountered this dbus error that says a connection couldn't be established, Anaconda is the culprit from that and specifically because it activates itself as your session is starting. Um, it has a lot in its bin and so that can take over your account. So by turning this off, it gives you a little bit more control of your environment, which is generally always a good thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. And now that the default behavior has been changed, I'm going to run the command conda activate. And this will actually start up Anaconda, which is shown by this base that now precedes my um, command line. So that's basically just how to get Anaconda initialized in your account and ready to use. The next bit is that we can create a local Conda environment. So if you've ever worked with Python before and created a um, virtual environment, this is sort of the same idea. So generally, you don't want to start Conda in it or um, Conda install a package name when you just see base. And the reason for this is one, either that package is going to try to go to a root owned location, which you don't have access to write to, or it's just going to add it to a hodgepodge general um, jumble of packages. And it's better to have some control over where these packages go. Um, specifically because it's, it's good for version control, reproducibility. You want to have as much control over your environment as possible. And so the way to do this is by creating a local Conda environment. So if you actually hop over to uh, TensorFlow's documentation, you'll notice that they suggest creating a Conda environment with Python 3.9. So we can match this up with our um, little cheat sheet here. So the information that Conda needs is basically the name that you want to give your Conda environment as well as the Python version number. So I'm going to go ahead and use Python 3.11 since it's slightly newer, but um, we're going to do this by Conda create name and then we're going to give it the name TF that TensorFlow suggests, but honestly you could give it any name. And then we're going to do Python equals 3.11. And now I'm going to go ahead and pause this video while uh, Conda works through its um, environment configuration. All right, and we're all set. So the Conda environment has been created. So this is what you missed while I was gone. Um, Conda has gone through. It's uh, listed a bunch of packages that it's going to install for me, asked me to confirm. I did. And it's gotten everything set up and ready to go. So I can go ahead and get started by activating this environment by running this command here. And as soon as you see this um, prompt change from TF uh, from base, this means that our TensorFlow local environment is now ready to go and active. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear my terminal because we're getting a little bit messy here. Now, let's hop back over to the TensorFlow documentation. Now, if you look under the GPU setup bit here, you'll notice that they um, talk about installing these CUDA toolkits. I don't really like these instructions. I found that they don't work on our system. Um, instead, what I prefer to do is use our CUDA modules. So let's hop back over into the terminal and let's run the command module avail CUDA. So the CUDA modules that we want are the latest defaults. So specifically this CUDA 11.8, uh, 22.11, and 8.9.2. So let's go ahead and load those into our environment. How about I not make you watch me go through and type everything by hand? All right. So there we go. 
So now we should be ready to install TensorFlow. So let's hop back over into their web page here, scroll down to pip install TensorFlow, and we'll install version 2.13. So back in my terminal, pip install TensorFlow, and I'll go ahead and pause this video again because this could take a little while. All right, and we're all set. So we've installed uh, TensorFlow here. So let's run a quick check to make sure that it can see the GPU. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clear again and let's run the command Python. So you can see we're using 3.11, which is what I requested when I set up my environment. And now let's import TensorFlow and also check that it can see the GPU. So if we run import TensorFlow as TF, and we check for the physical devices that are available, you can see that it can see the GPU, so success. So if your primary interest was in um, configuring a local Conda environment, getting things set up, getting some packages installed, this was the general section on how to do that, and we're going to be moving on now to how to make this actually accessible in an open on-demand Jupyter notebook. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cancel this Python session. And we're going to set up and uh, install a local custom kernel. So the first thing that we need to do is run the command pip install Jupyter. Suddenly don't trust my fingers anymore, all right. Okay, and I will be back as soon as this finishes installing. All right, and we've successfully installed Jupyter, which means that we can now set up a local custom kernel. So the way to do this is with an IPython command. We're going to run a kernel install, and then we're gonna give this kernel a name. So in this case, let's just call it TF. And when you go into your local Jupyter notebook, um, when you look under the uh, sessions that you can start, you will see the name that you give it here. So whatever you want your display name to be, um, that's what you put after this dash dash name. And lastly, we're going to use this flag user. So user means that you want to install the package under dot local or install whatever it is that you're installing under dot local. So rather than trying to target a system location, um, which is root owned and you don't have permission to write to, if you include dash dash user, it will stick it into your home directory into a hidden directory in there um, and make it so that it's only accessible to you. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And we should be all set. All right, so why don't we hop over into open on demand which is our web browser interface to HPC. So you can find that under um, ood.hpc.arizona.edu. I can um, put some links at the end of this video to show you how to get there. Um, but we have a number of interactive applications that are available through Open On Demand. So if you go under apps, um, actually probably interactive apps is better. You can see that we have jo Jupyter Notebook available that's uh, something that you can request. Um, and then in the request form, you can fill in the cluster that you want to submit to, um, the amount of time that you want your session to be reserved for, the number of CPUs, um, the amount of memory per CPU, uh, the number of GPUs. So in my case, this is one, but if you're not working with uh, software that's going to be making use of a GPU, you can set this to zero. Um, your accounting information and the standard queue, which I, I strongly suggest you use. Um, and once you click launch, it will open a tile for you that will show you the state of your job. So I already have one running. So if I go to my interactive sessions, um, we can see this tile here. Uh, when you first submit it, it will show that it's in the pending state. Um, as soon as it goes to running, uh, you will be able to connect to it. So. I will click connect to Jupiter here. And if I go under new, um, we should be able to see the kernel that I just created if everything went well. And there we go. 
Here's TF, which is the kernel that I just created, which has TensorFlow installed. So I'll go ahead and open that. Now, let's try running the command um, import TensorFlow as TF. All right, so we can see that TensorFlow is in fact available and ready to use. Um, but let's try adding another cell. And let's see if it can make use of the GPUs. So no, if you look under here, this little empty brackets, it means it's not finding a GPU. So what's the problem? So if we insert another cell and we run the shell command module list to show us which modules we currently have available in our environment, you can see that these are what are loaded by default. We have R4.0, we have uh, Python 3.8, even though we're using Python 3.11 through our Conda environment. Um, we have OpenMPI, we have uh, Auto Tools. So right now our CUDA modules are not available, which is what we need in order for TensorFlow to be able to make use of the GPU. So that's where the last part of this tutorial comes into play, is we need to edit our uh, kernel in order to give access to additional modules. Now to do this, we need to give, get access to a specific configuration file. So as a note, if, if you don't need additional modules in your TensorFlow, or sorry, in your Jupyter environment, um, you don't need to worry about editing these files and you can um, happily stop this video here. But if you do want to get access to additional modules, we're going to have to go to our files in our home directory and we're going to have to look under that dot local directory that I talked about. So first click this shot show dot files option here and filter to local and you'll see this directory here. And then under share, Jupyter and kernels, you'll find your files under the name that you have given your particular kernel. So if you've set up multiple kernels, you'll see multiple directories here. Now inside of this directory, you will find a file that's called kernel.json. So if you click the little ellipses here and click edit, that will show you the contents of this file. The bit that we're interested in is this section right here. So this is what the system executes to start your Jupyter Notebook. Now we want to turn this into a bash command and we want to run the module load commands as well as everything else that's shown here. And we're going to condense this into a one-liner. All right, so to do that, we're going to add a new line. We're going to do bash, comma, dash C. And now we're going to put in the commands that we want to be able to start our uh, notebook. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to run some module load commands. So let's go back over into our terminal here. Um, I won't necessarily show you this so it's a little bit more streamlined, but we want to run our module load and then the names of the CUDA modules that we need to have access to. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste. All right, and then as a next line, we want to run these Python uh, IPy kernel launcher commands. So we're going to condense this into a single line here. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to copy and paste. So just start from this connection file, work on up to that Python 3.11 here. So this IPy kernel launcher, and then our connection file. And then once you've completed this line here, go ahead and highlight the connection file, go all the way back up to Python 3.11, and just delete that. And let's go ahead and save. And now we can head back over into our Jupyter Notebook and see what the behavior is like. So let's go over here 
let's um, shut down our notebook. Then we'll start it up again. Let's try our import TensorFlow again. And now let's see if we can find the GPU. And there it is. And so that is because now our modules include the CUDA 11 modules. So this gives us access to the GPU. All right, so basically let's wrap things up. So we started by configuring Anaconda, which was done by starting an interactive session on HPC. Um, you can run the Conda init bash to permanently initialize it in your account. So this only needs to be done once. As soon as you run Conda init bash, you won't need to do it again. Um, and then you will want to set your auto activation to false. Again, this is only done once. Um, each of these steps writes something to a hidden configuration file in your account. So your account will always know um, these options going forward unless you delete them. Um, and then you can create a local Anaconda environment by running Conda create. And then you can activate your environment. So now you're ready to go and install all the packages. So for installing the packages, um, just load any modules that are necessary. So in our case, we did CUDA, but other packages might rely on other software modules. And then you can install your package name, either using pip or conda. Now, I tend to like to stick with using Conda with the Conda Package Manager, but um, in some cases, PIP is also uh, useful. Um, for example, in this case, uh, TensorFlow did tell us to install um, TensorFlow via the PIP Package Manager into our Conda environment. Next, to make your Anaconda environment available in a Jupyter Notebook session, you'll install a custom kernel using the pip install Jupyter, and then the ipython kernel install um, commands. And then once you log into your Jupyter Notebook, you will be able to see that kernel on the side when you run, um, when you click on the new dropdown tab. And then finally, we edited our kernel to make the CUDA modules available. So this is only needed if you need to further configure in your environment, like giving access to CUDA or some other module that is um, not available by default. And um, this is to give access again to software modules or if you need to, for example, set environment variables, which is also something that might be necessary for you. And uh, this is done by editing the kernel.json file in that .local path. Now, um, just for some references, uh, if you go to docs.hpc.arizona.edu, you can find all of these instructions so you don't um, have to remember or keep coming back to this video. So uh, if I bring us to the uh, docs.hpc.arizona.edu, um, you can go under our user guide and then under our accessing software page. And then lastly, under using and installing Python and Python packages, um, you can find information on uh, initializing Anaconda, um, installing packages with Conda, and how to set up uh, your kernel. So that's great information. And um, lastly, if you want to go to open on demand, you can go to ood.hpc.arizona.edu. Hopefully this was helpful. Happy fall and see you next time.